Hello and welcome to Hank Games Without Hank. My name is John Green, manager of the AFC Wimbledon Wimbly Womblies, who today are taking on Everton at home. A huge game for us in every way. Everton, the kind of club that we're going to need to beat at home if we expect, God, their uniforms are ugly, if we expect to finish in the top four. Also, it is, that was a very, whoa, weird, weird, weird glitch. The, um, the lights are going inside the heads of our players. God, Callum Kennedy's haircut is so offensive to me. It just hurts my feelings. Um, this is a big day uh, because it's December 31st, 2016, inside the world of the Wimbley Womblies. And uh, there's a lot going on, right? I mean, we've got, two, we've got John Green. This means that tomorrow begins the transfer period. I like to think of it as sort of Wimbley Wombly Survivor. Who's going to get kicked off the island? Who is it that we're not going to be able to take with us on our glorious journey to greatness? As you can see, we're all the way up to sixth uh, on 35 points. This is a game, though, that we really, really could stand to win. This is the kind of game we're going to have to win um, if we're going to be uh, judged one of the uh, one of the teams that uh, goes to the Champions League. That's a fantastic steal by Dini. By the way, Dini and Dicko starting up front today. Um, they are uh, they have a complicated relationship. And also, I wanted to tell you that's Amora, our great central defender, our hardworking. That was not a foul. All I did was oh, thank you for calling it on him. Our hardworking central defender. That's Amora back from a broken leg. He has worked his butt off the last six months to get better. Um, and uh, he is back from his broken leg, and he is going to be a huge part of our run-in. He is going to be a big, so our, our defense has gotten much, much better as a result of that Zamora being part of it, and um, I am hopeful that he is all the way back to 100% and that we're going to see uh, the best that Zamora we can see. Um, that's a nice ball, but again, we, this is what we struggle with is balls to nobody. Um, you know, there's no sense in having these like beautiful big balls if you can't get them to someone you know so uh it's it's uh it's wimbly wombly survivor time we've we this is this is the beginning of the transfer window we've got to be frank about who's not going to be part of our club and who is going to be part of our club and for that i'm turning no, in no small part to you um if you have specific suggestions of young players or good players who aren't on extremely high salaries uh, in, in FIFA in 2016, let me know um, because I would like to acquire them for the Wimbly Womblies and, uh, and you know, make the, yeah, make the team stronger. But I also think we need to have a frank discussion about who's not going to be part of our club anymore. Um, who doesn't bleed Wimbly Wombly Blue? Who, it's not so much about who isn't good enough for me, it's about who doesn't want it enough. Oh, you got to get there. Um, obviously, John Green and John Green are going to be part of the team. Um, I think Dini and Dicko have both secured their spots. Dini, um, because he is, you know, a look. Obviously, Dini is, is not. He's not as a person the person I would dream for him to be. Oh God, that had to go in. Oh, that's frustrating. I need to see a replay. I just that that was just it was just. Oh, that had to go in. Um, he's not the person all of the time that I would like for him to be, although I'm, you know, trying to work with him to, to make better decisions and stuff. But, like, he saved our season last year. There's no other way that you can say it. And um, he's, a, he's a part of Wimbly Wombly history, and I don't think that we can let him go. Also, I, I think we need good strikers, and Dini is a good striker. He's not an amazing one. Uh, I, you know, I think if he made better decisions in his personal life, he would be a, an easier guy to work with. Um, in the back, in the central defense, we've got, that's Amora, um, who's very good. Uh, we've got Osea. We've got Di Michelis, who's good, but will likely retire. Um, he is 35 years old, after all. Um, and then we've got, uh, um, and then on the wings, we've got Callum Kennedy, who's been, from the very beginning, a huge part of the Wimbley Wombly story. And despite his terrible haircut, which I've encouraged him to make different decisions about, but he just doesn't seem to, to be interested, like... Uh, I think Callum Kennedy. I think Callum Kennedy can be part of the success of the Wimbley Wombies moving forward. We cannot give up a goal here, guys. Good job, really good job. And then we pass it out of the back like the Wimbley Wombies do, and uh, it almost leads to disaster, but it's avoided. That's nice. That's good stuff. Ah, oh, goalkeeper. Um, 
Midfield, we've got too many right midfielders, no left midfielders, uh, so we've got to make some decisions. Do we keep Frankenstein? Do we keep Moe's Vestergaard? Do we keep uh, Sermon, who's also a right midfielder? I have to say that I think Sermon, and I don't just think this because he's a ginger, is part of our future. Um, he's a really likable kid. Uh, do we keep the golden child, who now is 14 years old, recently turned 14, and still, you know, I have to say, not quite living up to his promise? Um, do we keep girls just want to have fundings route? Another 15 year, he's 15, but another teenager who plays for the Wimbley Womblies who, who hasn't yet uh, kind of come into his own as a player. Um, I'm not sure. I think that uh, girls just want to have fundings route. He's on the, he's on the chopping block for me. Um, but I don't know how you guys feel. He has a great nickname, and that's not worth nothing. But, um, but I don't know. Also, uh, you know, what kind of players do we need? I think we need uh, players who can transform the game in midfield uh, by with really accurate passes and really accurate crosses. Um, that's something that we've struggled with all season long against Premier League opposition. Um, and then I think we need players who have the kind of pace on the wings and in the center that they can just open up the whole game. And then I would love to have some midfielders who can finish. Because right now... The vast majority of our goals come from our strikers because we just don't have we don't have midfielders who can who can shoot. Um, we've got midfielders who are nice people. We've got midfielders who are children. We've got midfielders who have children, but we don't have midfielders who can really finish. And that's something I think we'd oh god I think we'd all like to see. Um, there that was a midfielder trying to finish. It didn't work though. Pass pass no come on uh, one touch football guys i've been working on them a lot with uh, the idea in practice a lot with the idea of one touch like to keep the game flowing because you know we aren't look we're not as talented as really any of the teams that we're taking on except for the maybe the the very bottom of the premier league the norwiches and stuff like that's where we are in terms of talent but if we can make the ball do a lot of the work for us by um, with fewer touches on the go, oh, Dicko. Uh, I mean, that's just that kind of floating cross is what's frustrating to me. And then I do unnecessary slide tackles. Um, so that's what we've been working on in, in training. And I just what I see, unfortunately, is I see a team that's good but not great. And I don't know if we're one player away from being great. But if we are, like I'd like to get that player. Or maybe we're three players away from being great, so we need to sell some guys to get some better guys. The other thing is squad depth. Um, right now, uh, we're in a situation where we get incredibly tired at the end of the year because we just don't have... Um, we rotate a fair amount, I think, compared to a lot of Premier League teams, but we don't have the kind of squad depth that you know, like a Chelsea or a Manchester City can afford and if we're going to be serious about trying to compete with those teams, like, that's that's what we need. Oh, that's not bad. That's not... Oh, Deedee! Oh, that's frustrating. That really is frustrating, Meredith. That just makes me feel a little angry. And, like, this, this to me encompasses why... This to me encompasses why we need change. We can't have that happening, man. can't have that kind of stuff happening like we need to be it needs to be we need to be pushing I'm only going to make one substitution right now because sometimes sometimes Sermon can change the game on his own and I don't necessarily want to take off Dini and Dicko before it's really time to but that was frustrating from Wes Moore oh man just I want to be yeah I just I want to be a team that can score goals and score them in bunches um, and uh, I feel like we're so reliant on our strikers offensively, and maybe that's a maybe that's a problem with our um, with the way that uh, we you know our formation and the way that we kind of like come out to play in the first place. But we're so reliant on them. Although then again, when you have oh Dicko, when you have Dicko, you can afford to be a little bit reliant on them. All right, that's Amora is up there. He's got a great head. Come on, that's Amora. Come on, that's Amora. Oh. Would be great if in his first game back from a broken leg he scored a goal. How special would that be to him and his family? You know that he moved his whole family from Brazil uh, to, to Wimbledon, to South London? And I don't just mean like his whole family, like uh, his wife and his three children. I mean his whole family, like 70 people. It's amazing.
Tatsumura has like absolutely fallen in love with South London. And who can blame him? Oh, you know, it's nothing but champagne and parties down here, especially if you hang out with Dini. Oh boy, just slide tackled my own guy. All right, 80th minute. Gotta say that uh, things are looking a little dark. This is a game, again, where a draw is not an embarrassment, but a win is really what we need. Um, we've got to try to find a way to win this game. These are the games that, like, that are the difference between the team that finishes seventh and the team that finishes fourth, you know? Like, the teams that can find a way to win these games are the teams that win, uh, that go to the Champions League. So, you know, I really, I, uh, yeah. Oh, that's good, but it wasn't great. All right, we're going to try to, we only have a few minutes here, but if we have a chance to bring on John Green and John Green, I think it's, I think it's the right kind of statement to make um, that we are not going to, like, sit here and, uh, and just accept uh, w less than ideal play from Dicko and Dini. Um, yeah, so I'm going to let them know that even if it doesn't get us the win. But I, I really feel like from Dicko and Dini, I wanted more, I just wanted more. I wanted better finishing, more accurate, more just like I want, I, I, I want players who care about the game, who like want to win out of love for this club and its owners. Get there, fight for it. Oh, that's frustrating. It's frustrating when I see you not fight for it. That's what I don't like. That's what I don't like. That's why John Green, even though he's old, he's the man because he just doesn't, he always fights for it. There's a level, oh, what, what? Is that the end of the game? Dang it. Oh, see, that's, okay, so going into the new year, that is the kind of performance we need to try to avoid. Your uh, help here is welcome and encouraged and really necessary, so thank you in advance. Oh, God, that's a terrible haircut. You are an embarrassment to my club. Thanks for being owners. Thanks for being supporters. Sorry that we couldn't get a goal for you today. Best wishes.